all of us are human beings. After all, we might be performers, but we also have feelings and families and things like that. And there is a real life. You know, what we've been talking about a lot is the ability that you guys have to go from asshole heel to Southern style baby face. And for you guys, obviously this happened so naturally. And some companies would stop that right in the middle or try to push down your throat who they want to be the baby face, who they want to be the heel. Right. So when you, when you start to feel this and see this, you know what I mean? And you guys, you know, obviously are in the business and have a sense for it. I mean, you guys are, are probably some of the best crowd readers in the world, in my opinion. Where does the conversation start? Is it like something you guys are both noticing at the same time? Or is it just like a starts with a feeling or a look or a reaction? What is it? Yeah, slowly it started. Honestly, for me, it started, I started noticing it on the, the, the darks and the elevations. The fans just, when we would, when our music would hit, that brand new music that they all fell in love with, when our music would hit, they were excited to see us. And we'd get like, yeah, I don't want to say we'd get a pop because that makes me sound like, you know, this egotistical bastard, but we would get a reaction. But then they were like, oh, wait a second, we're supposed to boo them. And, and we started noticing that. And so he and I started talking for a few months. We're like, hey, man, maybe, you know, maybe we should try this whole baby face thing out. Because here's the thing is, as, as heels or bad guys, the only thing that, that is different about us is draw our emotion from our real life frustrations. You know, right. so if I'm at Starbucks and there's someone in front of me and I haven't had coffee yet and they know what Starbucks has and they are saying, I get, I don't know, do I want to, in my mind, I'm like, hurry up. You know what fucking coffee they have. <sighs> and so I draw from that and, and, and that's the emotion that I draw. But in real life with my wife and my daughter, I love life. I, I, I love life and I love being with them. And so like, I can, I can pull from that and say, okay, this is the emotion that I want to invoke from the fans. And I want them to see like, Hey man, he's, he's, he's just like us, you know, an everyday, hardworking, average American and pulling that emotion from a good place in my life instead of pulling an emotion from, from a not so good place is the only difference between what we do as a baby face and as a heel. And with Dan, I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant, but with, with Dan, you know, with Cash, it started with his injury. And at the same time is when my anxiety started and our change in mentality completely helped both of us, but really saved me. Like having my wife help me through that and, and going to therapy and, and getting on medication like Zoloft and, and Klonopin and, and things that I would now advocate for. At one time I wouldn't, but like getting all those things and, and figuring out, hey man, life is really cool. Just take a step back and breathe and not, and, and try to not focus on the bad part of life. Going from that and, and when we changed our mentality, I think that's when the fans, and I think Cash may have hit on this earlier, but that, that's when the fans started accepting us and wanting us because they saw, okay, these guys are busting their ass and they're having fun. All because of that change in mentality. It just so happened that both of those, my anxiety and his injury, both happened almost simultaneously. That anxiety scared the shit out of me. I want to help as many people as I can to, to ever get over that. So long story short, I think, I think the, uh, the change of mentality is what made the people want to gravitate towards us. Yeah, yeah. like the, the scope of what Dax went through, like anxiety wise, when he finally opened up about that, I think that endeared him to a lot of people because that's not something that like a guy that calls himself Grumpy Uncle Dax talks about. He's, he's the surly asshole that knocks somebody out and wants to fight all the time. But, so to see him vulnerable, like, People appreciate being real again. Like, and it wasn't something like, it wasn't like this thought out, like, hey, do this. It was just, Renee gave him the, the platform and he, like the, she's just so easy to talk to. And, like, by the time you know, like you just, you're, you want to get that story out there and you want to help somebody. And like I so said, we, we started noticing it a little bit. Like, um, it was like a respect reaction. Like they, they would cheer and then they would boo. Or sometimes they would just, we did a, a dark match in Orlando against Toa and I can't remember the other guy's name right now, so I feel bad, but 
like it was Orlando, so I don't know. Sorry about the plane flying overhead. Uh, probably still at the airport, but they cheered us the whole time. They cheered us like baby faces, and it's weird. It, it kind of kept happening to, to lesser extents here and there. When we finally, hey, let's just let's not try to fight it. We won't, we won't change anything. We just won't fight it either. It just caught fire. It's it, from, and I, I've talked about this to him with him a few times. I'm sorry, I'm going on again. From Columbia to Dallas to Boston to New Orleans. Those four shows in like a two-week span to see like how the crowd like just went from we're heels one week, we're bad guys one week to just all of a sudden like the crowd's chanting FTR at the top of their lungs. I'm, yeah. I never could have imagined that, but I think it's just because we didn't try to force that. Yeah.